Hello everyone, welcome back to FX021. So in this lesson, we're gonna create the particle effects here. It's kind of like a move, the movement is like this. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. So yeah, let's get started. So we have the particle here. So create a geo here and dive inside. So the first thing I do is uh, using a object merge here. So in the last class, we create a sun five ball here. And you know, uh, I'm taking this part here, uh, taking this part here to create a particle effects because I want to fill this part with particles. So I think I use this one, the front one here the geo here and I just control C to copy it and go to the particles and paste it here so it's it's this one the path is here okay so once we got that we transform a hundred times because in the sampan ball here at at here we scale up 100 times so now you can see if we ghost here this is where we our particle will generate okay so let's go back to the particles and then I create a normal for it so if we visualize our normal it's it's shut but uh, it's okay you can't see it clearly so let's create a wrangle here uh, call it normal visualize and normal equals and normal times uh, skill. So now we can visualize our normal. Yeah, so when we visualize normal here, you can see. Uh, the normal is pointing to the Z direction here, okay? And uh, the key part to make particle, uh, the key part to make particle move like a uh, curly field here is to create a velocity field to move move like this, okay? And that's how we create tornado or something like that. Okay. And it's pretty simple. So once we have our normal here, let's put our visualize flag on it. I have an attribute Bob here. And after the attribute Bob, I can show you the result. Our normal now look like this. Okay. So that's why my particle move like this. Okay. Pretty cool. And I, just transfer the normal to the velocity so the particle will move like this okay so we are doing a mass operation called cross product so you can search that online uh, cross cross product so basically it will take two vectors and give you a value uh, it give you another vector that is perpendicular to the that two vectors okay so we got our position uh, uh, we got our normal which is pointing this way and we got our position for each um, each point the position is the one that uh, if I'm taking the point here the position vector is pointing this way okay from the zero zero to the vector here so you got one vector pointing here one vector pointing this way pointing this way so another one vector which is perpendicular to both of them is pointing this way and we do that on each point so that we get this kind of you know uh, vector so if we take the result from a cross product directly uh, directly put to the normal you can see uh, for some of them it's 
too small and for these part are too too big so we will get different velocity in the inner part which we don't want we want the uh, velocity to be equal on each point so we just normalize it so that each vector should be the same so if we plug the normalized vector to the normal here you can see every you can see all of them are small including the one that are outside here and then we just multiply to a constant here so we call it v skew and pr plug that in the normal here now you can see that we have like uh, uh, evenly uh, the lengths are even on every point and it's visible here and we can adjust the, the v skew here okay now you can see that's how you're gonna like uh, how it's gonna like in the velocity when we do the pop net uh, simulation so i set to 20 you can use other values here and uh, let's now after we have the normal here i transfer that into the velocity so i can turn off the normal here uh, and turn on the visualizer for the velocity now you can see yeah it's the same okay and uh, you can also like just plug that into the velocity here then you don't need the wrangle here to transfer that but uh, it's easier for me to view the normals so yeah so we got the velocity but it's too evenly uh, across the all the geometry here so i just add a little bit noise with the point velocity here you can change that to keep incoming because we already calculate it here so keep incoming and based on the incoming velocity we add a little bit curl noise you can play around skill now you can see it's it's a little bit noise here here so yeah you can play around the value here so i just add a little bit noise because i don't want it too much and uh, yeah i think that's it then you just feed that into the pop network and uh, in the pop network it's, uh, it's pretty simple just the basic ones and mainly you just want to uh, uh, adjust the, the birth rate which uh, how many particles will boom how many particles you will have in the simulation and keep in mind that uh, we will import this in the into a real engine so you don't want too much point okay and uh, you can play around the life expectancy and the life variance here and all that and all of that and uh, you got your simulation here let's play it so you can see it's pretty cool and uh, what i also have is the pop color uh, you can have change it to ramp and the color will be based on the age here okay so you just pick any color you like and uh, that's it that's it for the particle simulation let me turn off the visualize for the velocity so now that if you play from the first frame to the last frame let's see there will be a pop because it's not infinitely looping see there is a pop so in the first frame not a lot of particles but last frame to the first frame you can see pop and we don't want that in a real engine we want it for uh we want it to permanently move uh uh, loop so uh, we add the make loop here which is a uh, labs labs tool so you can install it the side of labs here in the shelf just uh, check check that and the restart houdini then you will have that so just add that and you can see the first frame to the last frame you will not see pop here now let's see see it's permanently looping okay so 
uh, you can play around the you need to uh, change default I think it's set to VDB you can change it to particle and the start and end frame you don't need to touch that uh, you can play here I think I set to restart particle original age at loop start and that after loop end is remove particles and you can choose die at the end and respawn as new particles at the start Niagara okay and the Niagara is the system in the Unreal Engine uh, particles uh, particle system okay yeah all that is default and uh, yes and uh, the P scale here we talk about a lot in, in my channel so I'm not gonna explain it basically it's uh, the P scale is how big is your particles in render so basically what I do is based on the age here I the particles will be uh, be smaller as it lives longer so if we use copy to point and uh, sapphire you can see they have different they kind of have subtle uh, difference in size okay this is too much but you can see some of them are, are smaller some of them are larger so that's what it do but uh, you can keep it a constant value just for p-skill and you can adjust that in a real engine as well so no need to worry about that because the skill in Houdini and Unreal are different so yeah you can adjust that in Unreal as well and after the p-skill and the make loop I think that's it uh, for the Houdini side and if you have the side F labs I mentioned that earlier so it's uh, it's here so if you have that they include a tool called Niagara so labs Niagara rough here create that so choose the range you want to render so it's my set is to 1 to 240 and you can choose the output pass here so just make sure name it hbjson file and add your pass b before okay and uh, once you have that uh, you can include the attribute here the default is good so and you hit render once you render that out it's a json file which will have your particle position, your particle ID, all of that attribute in the JSON file and the Unreal will recognize it. And in Unreal side, we need to install uh, a Niagara plugin for that. So a uh, Houdini Niagara import uh, plugin in Unreal and then it will recognize the JSON file and uh, all these will work. So we're gonna talk it uh, in Unreal part so but for Houdini you just need the labs tool and uh, create Niagara here and uh, once you are done the simulation just render okay it will not take too long maybe 30 seconds or one minute so it will render that out yeah uh, I think that's it for today thanks for watching